Hey, and we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino, and today we're talking Elden Ring. Now, just like to say it for these big videos, thank you so much for watching these Before You Buy videos over the last few years. Uh, we all really appreciate it. Genuinely, it's our job, it puts food on our table, but we love that you come here. Thank you. Uh, so, straight off the bat, Elden Ring is great. It's challenging, it's got the From Software stuff you want, it's got an open world that doesn't suck and feels absolutely unique and addictive. It's got great stuff for newcomers to get into it and it's got those crushing, incredible boss battles. It's absolutely massive and challenging and I think it's a game changer, full stop. Now, so you know, this footage we've all been playing here is captured on PC and PS5 versions. Now, big shout out to Eric and Andrew behind the scenes for this. Uh, and also this footage is spoiler free. We're really sticking roughly to like two major areas. Cause I know Souls fans consider almost everything a spoiler because the real fun is in the magic of the discovery. So we can't completely avoid that, but uh, just know that we're gonna try our best here. And some additional context so you know what kind of info and opinion you're getting here. We're a mixed group here at Game Rank. Some of us here are very into these games where myself, I'm a bit more casual. I've played them. I've taken a long time to understand from software games and appreciate them. And uh, Elden Ring definitely seems to check the boxes for both types of fans and even newcomers, which I'll get to. So in it, you are a tarnished, thrust into a land torn apart by conflict. The Elden Ring has been shattered and a select few hold the shards. And it's up to you to journey, defeat them and become the Elden Lord. Now, like I'm totally glossing over it and butchering it a bit, but hey, you know how these From Software games can be. Story light, intentionally vague and wordy, seemingly on the surface, but actually really interesting. Elden Ring does show it a bit more on the surface. It's, it's a bit more easy to immediately grasp exactly what's going on and get a sense of this sad, lonely, brutal world. There's a nice little bit of characters to talk to here and there and get some interesting story contact and it's actually pretty cool. Now, Game of Thrones author George Railroad Martin did uh, work on the early phases of this in, in some world building overarching stuff. It's hard to say what exactly his influence is here, you know, compared to Miyazaki and the rest of the team, but hey, the game overall does feel a little different, but don't get it twisted. It is still typical from software the way it goes. And of course, the real meat is the gameplay, and it is extremely fun to play for like a boatload of reasons. So, you know, on the basic end, you build out your character with the starting class as kind of like a stat baseline, but then you go from there, dumping points into whatever as you level up, you know? Strength and endurance, maybe a strong, sturdy knight, or maybe a magic user, or a quick and dexterous assassin. The choice is yours, as usual, and the variety, once again, is really damn good. Everything has their own clear strengths and weaknesses, uh, but way more nuances to discover the more you play into them. And it always plays differently. You know, one of us here has a completely different character type than the other, and it's like a totally different thing. From character build to equipment type to weapon type, it's, it's totally different. These games beg rolling multiple characters and replayability. Combat itself is challenging and deliberate. I think if you're already decided you don't like soul style combat, this won't change your mind, but there is some fun new stuff. Now for the layman, think Dark Souls combat, but with a jump button and a really solid guard counter attack that is satisfying to pull off. Uh, you can still parry if you have the tools, but a guard counter timed just right and the sound effect triggers and you get an extra hit, that's where you can really feel a little Sekiro influence here and there and it works out nicely. Ashes of War here are like built up versions of weapon arts. They're special skills you can find and improve and add to your armaments. Some are just kind of like a cool new sword spin move or something more magical and powerful. There's a lot of them to discover here and it just adds to your repertoire sometimes, more than just you know a new ax or a cool piece of armor. Spirit ashes also are very important. They're like cool summons that most characters can pull off on a base level and they let you have some help in battles, like summon some killer ghost wolves, undead soldiers, or even more weird, surprising things we won't spoil. And if you play your cards right and you pay attention to how the game plays out, you can upgrade these as well. And when you're out there, you're also finding crafting recipes to craft more items like little throwable bombs or knives or buff items and consistently strengthening your weapons and of course, 
finding bonfires, and farming souls, which this time around are sites of grace and runes, respectively. Uh, there are a lot of stats and numbers overall, but what it boils down to is good old fashioned RPG gameplay where stats and gameplay mechanics go hand in hand like spaghetti and meatballs or lamb and tuna fish. But the magic is really in the world and the exploration. This is where I think it might finally click for newcomers and where veterans can just have some good, new, fresh fun. Uh, so you have a mount, interestingly enough, named Torrent that you can summon and cruise around in, uh, go off wherever you want and have fun discovering stuff, hidden bosses, dungeons, items, even NPCs. There's just so much stuff begging to be discovered and the game encourages you to do so by keeping the restrictions light and generously placing sites of grace for checkpoints. And a lot of stuff is truly hidden here. Like you gotta really look for it because it's tucked away or there's some really obscure way to unveil or unlock something. People are gonna hit the occasional like, okay, wh what the hell do I do now roadblock? but that's kind of the nature of these games, and there's a lot here. Still, the overall freedom really helps. See something scary? Just sprint away and come back later, stronger. There's a bit of forgiveness here in the open environments because the game wants you to learn and get better and grow stronger. It almost kind of baits you in as a newcomer. You know, this world is completely organic and it's, it's not a map filled with question marks or filler content. All of it in there is just waiting to be organically found or stumbled upon and all of it is meaningful and beneficial. Optional dungeons that you can find are usually good surprises, even if sometimes they have similar or kind of bland looks, uh, but not the legacy dungeons. The legacy dungeons are like the more legit ones. All of them though, uh, they're great and they have at least one surprise. Now you can explore and not do any of the main stuff for a shockingly long time. I'm talking hours, especially as you're still getting your feet wet. There's a lot of fun in getting lost and stumbling upon something, you know, way more so than in any other recent, more standard open world game. It's a completely different feel here and it totally makes sense why From Software decided to make an open world game. They didn't do it just because that's the thing, that's the trend. They gave it a real unique value. A lot of that value comes from the open world mashed with the traditional Dark Souls stuff. Large keeps, castles, and more uh, main quest areas. Got that traditional flow and feel and big sub bosses and nasty main bosses. Some really freaking tight, compelling adventure stuff. But if you hit a wall with a really difficult spot, you can just go screw off in the open world for hours and hours. I swear, you could spend hours messing around before finally getting around to the first main boss. Just grinding and exploring and legit just having challenging fun. That freedom, again, is awesome. I cannot express how much of an addictive game changer it is to just have the traditional soul elements mixed with an open world that is not only massive, but is actually interesting and worthwhile in a more old school way that is just revolved around discovery and not tracking a million quests on a pause screen. And again, like I had said, for some newcomers, this might be the first Souls game that clicks with you because uh, at first it's more approachable. It kind of gives you just enough conveniences to make you feel like you're being challenged somewhat, but still having fun and progressing moving forward. You know, bonfires can be fairly close together. There aren't any other penalties really for dying other than the rune loss and stuff like that. Okay, not bad. Uh, then you get to a boss and it's like, okay, now it's time to really play. But both the new open world aspects and the traditional dungeon-y RPG aspects are great. Just when the open world might feel a little bit sparse, you come upon a perfectly spooky, dense, atmospheric haunted graveyard with an enemy you've never seen before. Just when you're thinking you're getting good at the game, a new boss beats your ass or you get lost and you fall off a cliff. I don't know. It retains the nuance that people come to these games for though. And I expect that me and many other review type people are really only scratching the surface here. Once millions of people hop in at once and start exploring, uh, maybe even together with the multiplayer features, then I expect a lot more cool stuff to come out. I think we might be keeping it simple here, but I, I hope we're getting across how fun this game can be. It's hard to do this video without spoiling things, to be honest, because some map discoveries or some gameplay elements are a complete surprise worth experiencing. And on the visual front, the game can look great from an art direction standpoint. Cool lighting, weird fantastical elements, sights you've never quite seen before and anything else, wild architecture, and gross, weird, screen-filling bosses. Sometimes it can feel like the detailed areas aren't quite 
as detailed as they would be if it were the more linear game, but that's a teeny tiny nitpick and most people I don't think will even notice or care. The further you get in, the cooler the environments really look. And performance wise, on console, everything seemed to be fine other than some pretty rough pop in in spots, like specifically with textures and landscapes. Environments will just pop in in front of you like grass textures, but they would harshly pop in and change colors. A little messy, a little off putting but nothing game breaking. And thankfully, uh, speaking of game breaking, we haven't found any real substantial bugs or glitches or anything like that. It's still a game of this style, so there are some things you can do or some decisions you can make that'll really screw you over, but no actual glitches or bugs that we've really seen that hurt anything. PC version seems okay-ish, but the graphics options are pretty limited and we did have some weird slowdown bits here and there, despite having a powerful PC. So it's something to keep an eye on. But to conclude, if you can't tell, this is a lot of game. Many of the reviews coming out on websites are reviews in progress for a reason. The game is dense and just like an unprecedented level of large. And people who got early access to the game only had so much time. But I don't think I can really express how big this freaking thing is. Elden Ring really feels like the next step for From Software Soul style games. It keeps what makes them so special and it adds more in a non cynical way. It moves forward and not because it needed to, but because they had a cool way of doing it. The exploration is that addictive and the world and atmosphere that enjoyable, coupled with that tried and true gameplay. This is one of our first absolutely massive wins for 2022. And it feels good to say that. For us here, at the very least, it seems like the hype has been real. We're satisfied. But of course, that's it before you buy. You probably know how this goes by now. We give you a bunch of gameplay. We give you some pros, some cons, and some personal information. So now we're looking forward to hearing yours. Maybe you played the technical test. Maybe you have a lot of experience with these games already. Uh, we're putting out this video before release. So we wanna know what you're thinking in the days leading up to it. If you're watching this later, after the game releases, definitely let us know what you think about your character build, uh, your weapon types, anything you've discovered along the way that you found strange We'd love to hear your stories. And again, thank you for watching these videos. We very much appreciate it. Hopefully the information is useful to you. Uh, clicking the like button is all you got to do. It really genuinely helps us out. Thank you. I'm Jake Baldino. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. We're almost at 7 million subscribers. It's insane. Anyway, uh, thank you for being here. See you guys next time.